Hey, hi everyone. This is Vivek, and welcome to this fourth episode of Ad Coder Weekly. Today we're going to take about this particular problem, Zor to all, which is from ARC 135, and this is a really cool problem on Zor. A very simple like question with a very essential technique, with a pinch of let's say ad hocish or observational thing, which every ad coder problem by the by now has, right? So let's get into the problem. Before that, there are two very essential learnings in this particular video, but I'm not going to be spelling them out. Directly, it's your task to understand what those two learnings are and write that down into the comments. Right, hundred comments is what we target for every videos because if hundred people learn from my videos, that's something that is a personal goal to me. Right, so make sure you comment after the video that what you learned from this. Let's move into the problem. Zor to all. So we have an array given to us where we have this particular operation that you can choose any number which belongs to the set of arrays that is currently present the elements that is currently present in the array and then zor every element in the array with that element right and then finally you have to maximize the sum of all elements that is present in the array right and this is all that is given to the problem very simple and crisp problem the number of elements is pretty high like 320 power 7 so n n log n kind of things might work but nothing like n square ish would not work and the numbers are up to 2 to, to, to the power 30 Yeah, that makes sense. So we have actually thirty bits of positioning because we have some zors and also bits would be relevant. And we can see that okay, this is over here. So if we take take x equal to one, ah, uh, then we essentially get this array, and then we take x equal to five, so it changes it into this array, and then we get the sum of this positioning as this, right? Makes sense. So finally. we given something like this uh, for this if if you take a zor with any of the numbers all of them become zero so it's essentially good to not do any operation and just have a 50 right so we can choose to not do any number of operations as well so that's the problem pick one zor with everything you can do this multiple number of times find the maximum sum of elements let's see how we can solve this up so in this particular problem we have multiple different aspects to it and to understand all of them you have to first understand the operation right in a lot of such problems that are there where you have to do add coder right add coder or code forces problems where there is some operation given to you there is some inherent kind of pattern or some inherent observation of the of the uh, operation itself if it's new that is generally leveraged to solve a lot of questions right so you have to understand what exactly goes in the like whole of the problem and use it to solve the problem so there is this problem that you can there is this operation you pick any element and zor everything with that how do you do with that so let's say you have an array let's say a1 a2 right so let's say we pick any one of the pro any one of the elements and zor the whole array with it so the array will become a1 zor a2 and the other element would be zero right because you zored a2 with a2 so that becomes zero right now if you want to pick any one of the elements if you pick zero then again the array remains the same if you now pick this element and do it again you essentially get this becomes zero and this becomes a1 or a2 so nothing change happens in this whole array right let's take three elements and then try to do a1 a2 a3 right let's pick a1 right anyways these elements are like i have not given any value so it's agnostic to that so let's say we have uh, this a1 to be picked up picked up and then zored with all of the elements that this is zero a2 or a1 a3 or a1 right and this all is the array that is that we get after one operation let's pick any one of the non zero elements this one like a2 or a1 right so if we now zor the whole array with that you will get a2 or a1 zored with zero so you get a2 or a1 right this becomes zero and this becomes a3 zor a1 zor a2 zor a1 so a1 gets zored twice and there is this property that a zor b zor b is equal to a right because if you zor subtract twice that bit flips twice and then you get a itself so this becomes a3 zor a2 right so this is like after you do with a1 you do it with a2 zor a1 right and you can see that this array that you got is essentially same as if you would have done a2 just a zor with a2 right makes sense uh if you if you just pick any element and then again do it like let's say if you do it with this one again you essentially see that you get a2 A two is twice, so it's a one zor a three. This is a three zor a two, and then this is zero, uh, right? And you can see that this is a one zor a three, a two zor a three, and zero. This is nothing but what you get if you just take a three with zor with everything. So even after one operation, if you try to do it with some new element again, the array that you reach can be reached by just taking either a two or a three. 
and this is the crux observation of this particular problem that okay there is this initial set let's say initial array a and let's say you can go to a bunch of arrays like let's say you pick a war and then you go to some a a a dash right and then uh, from this you can do some other a twos or a war and then you can reach to some a double dash right something like this I mean, some bunch of uh, positionings that you can reach right and the claim is like whichever position you reach uh, you can kind of reach it with just some other single element a2 so the whole reachable set of arrays that is there which is going to give you some result is reachable from just a single move which is either pick a1 or a2 or a3 or so on even if you do it multiple number of times right because if you if you can reach like if every two steps can be decomposed into a single step right then you take a third step right some third step into some new array then this is also like a two step process right so every two step can be decomposed into a one step that's what you can use as an induction proof and then prove this particular result right and then finally uh, solve this particular problem right so this is the observation that is used in this particular problem Right, so all of the things that we can reach into is something that we can generate using a single array. This is how you can prove it with induction. So now we have got our main observation, right? Observation. We have already read it up. So this is in observation phase right now. So we can like from any array, like the only set of results that we can generate is by taking if by is either by taking nothing like nothing don't zor it with anything or zor it with a1 or zor it with a2 or so on right just a single element zor is going to give you the result and out of that only you have to get the maximum so we have to find out either submission of ai is answer or submission of ai zor a of some uh, let's say x right and this x is some element belonging to this only these bunch of arrays is what you have to find uh, and take a max across, right? If you take a max across all of these, this is what you get gets you the result. The rest all is just something derived out of this only, right? So that's the whole observation of this particular problem and rest is just to evaluate how you can ca calculate this fast, right? And that is again the second trick of the whole problem or second technique of bitwise problems or bits or problems in general. That this is obviously easy to, this you can find in order n. So there are over here, O of n number of patterns and if you just loop over everything and then get the array and then take a sum it's going to cost you O of n again so in total it's order n square kind of in computation but this can be optimized by using something related to bits right let's think about how we can do this so there is this but there isn't there is this set of arrays a1 a2 a3 right add up to a n and we're going to choose some x and then zor every element of this array with x and then get the sum of the elements right so there is this particular property that when you have to evaluate these things, AI, Zor, some X number, this X is going to belong to one of these elements itself, but still let's call it that X. When you have to evaluate this, right? The simple trick that you use in these kind of problems is decompose, decompose each bits, right? So decompose each bits and process them independently because whenever you have, we are summing up each bit don't really interact with each other and then the elements of the zo the x's bits behave independently so let's say if there is this set of elements one three five if you write it in bitwise sense uh, this is going to be one zero zero one this is zero one one this is uh one zero one right something like this let's say and uh, let's say we take a zor with seven right zor with seven that is one 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 essentially this is this is saying this is nothing but like you have this particular portion, this portion of second bits, this portion of the like first bit. This is the zeroth bit, first bit, second bit, right? So this one kind of flips only these things over here. This one flips only things over here. This one flips only things over here, right? And then essentially uh, you get the final array and then you sum them up. So we can find the positional number of ones that you get over here in each of the numbers and then simply sum up with the positional value. So we can essentially find out that, okay, there are two zeros uh and one ones in the first position and the zeros are gonna become one because we are using the one over here in the number that we are having in x as an x and then that can flip out all the numbers so we have to just flip out the zeros and count there are two two positions which has zeros so two into the positional value so this is the second bit so one shifted by two is what you get as the contribution from this position right plus from this position there are two zeros so again the same thing two into positional value is one shifted by one this time because it's the first position zeroth position every number has two to the power zero weight to it there are zero ones so plus zero into 
one shifted by zero. This is a, this is the final result that you get. X is equal to seven, and these are the three numbers. So for every position, you just have to know the number of zeros and ones, and then you can evaluate this very fast because for any number, you have to just go through all the bits, and then according to the being zero or one, if had this been a zero over some place. That particular places one should have been added to the contribution. If it is zero, then it's zero is what's getting added as a contribution. So simply, the rule that we use to com compute is something that you can do in order k, where k is let's say the number of bits, or we can say that it's thirty, right? Because in this position, in this problem, AI was up to to the power thirty. So for every position of the k, you go and then evaluate the Values. So let's say you have the array A given to you, right? From this you extract out. So this is a sort of formulation phase, right? That we are formulating how we will do all of these things. So we have the we have the array with us. From this we will extract out a thirty position array, right? Thirty position. Let's say array thirty position array. Like these are zero, one, two, up till thirty, twenty nine, in fact, right? And uh, for each of these positions, what we do is we count out the number of zeros and number of ones. So let's say there are three zeros, four ones. I mean, the number of this would be summed up to n. But anyways, you have to need the individual counts: one, six, zero, seven, four, three, something like this, right? So you, you get the number of zeros and ones, right? Now, once you have this decomposed count array, let's call this a count array. Now, given any x, let's say one zero one one something like this, it's very simple to calculate the answer because for every for a one, right, all those numbers which had one in this position will be will have zero at the end, and all those numbers which had zero at this position will have one at this end, right? So what you can do is you can simply evaluate the number of zeros, okay, zeros multiplied by the positional value one shifted by two to the power nine, right? It's zero, so count the number of ones, six, like. Ones in this position, which is six in this case, multiplied by one shifted by twenty-eight, and something like this. Dot 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 dot. Uh, since it's a one, zeros needs to get counted. Zero, like into one shifted by one. Uh, one needs to be counted. The number of zeros over here is four. So four into one shifted by zero, and you just sum these values up. There are thirty numbers over here. So in order thirty, you can do this very neatly. And then finally, you can solve this problem in order k. So for any particular given x, you can evaluate the sum of a i zor x. If you pre-compute this count of every bit, you can evaluate this in order thirty. So with the O of n pre-computation, you can now query essentially build a query system where you can give in the x and it will give you the sum of a i zor x across all elements in order thirty. And this is what we eventually need, right? Because there are kind of n numbers that you want to put as n, as x. Sorry, you have to get for every a i that is possible. So it's an order n number of queries, and for each query you need order thirty. So essentially, you can solve this problem in order n into k or order n into thirty, thirty n kind of thing, right? So that's the number of bits multiplied by n. So that's the best we can do for this particular problem, and uh, there are two very essential observations that I talked about. I'm just giving you quick pointers on that. Make sure that you comment them down below because if you write, you're gonna remember it for a very very long time. And believe me, the number of techniques that you have is what builds your whole like uh, like long term career in let's say competitive programming. Because whatever is the technique, if that pops up again in a particular problem, is what you use. So the first observation was. the at coders uh, questions have this at like ad hocish twist right so you have to understand these observations of the pattern of the operations that is defined in the problem and in that case in this one it's that any set that can be reached by multiple operations can be reached by a single move that's the main observation at the next was to how do you evaluate it for these very values these order and number of values easily using this particular system where we have to cal calculate this for each x quite pretty fast and for that we had discussed this particular system where you keep the number of count of zeros and ones in each position and then get the sum of ai zor x in order 30 like order number of bits which is pretty neat right contribution from each position is what you calculate and then get the answer so that's all for this particular video if you like the content do like the video and then subscribe to the channel for few more such videos and Do don't forget to comment down what you learned, right? Because it will retain in your mind for a very long time, right? Also, you can also check out the other comments so that you can learn more. That's all for this one. Thank you, and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.